Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game, but before we check out the game, uh, I would just like to thank everyone for joining the stream yesterday, uh, for joining the Alicia's Arena, there were over 6,000 players, so it's uh, a record for this channel, uh, really uh, just a wonderful event, and uh, for those of you who weren't able to follow the stream but uh, have entered the giveaway, uh, I have put uh, a list of all the 10 people who won the giveaway and the list will be in the description below at the end, so do check it out, uh, if you by any chance won, just contact me via either via email via any social network and uh, we, we will uh, arrange how how I will present you with the prize now getting back to this game it's a 15 year old Gary Kasparov uh, against American Grandmaster Semen Palatnik the game was played in 1978 in uh, da Dagapils in Latvia and uh, it's uh, just a wonderful attacking game now I have a, a series of books on world champions they are very short it's not really book it's more of a booklet or something uh, but it's really short and it's uh, sort of a compilation of best games by every world champion. And uh, in, in the one about Garry Kasparov, this game is uh, the, the first game in the book. And ever since I saw this game, when I first started playing chess and then I was like uh, looking, uh, okay, there's this defense, there's this defense, there's this attack, there are gambits. Uh, I found the, the Alejin defense. And then I saw, of course, the, the four pawns attack against the Alejin defense. And I thought that was the best way to go about it. And that is the main weapon against the uh, Alejin's defense. Uh, but then after I saw this game it really impressed me and I found a different line that I liked even more and ever since I saw this game uh, I started playing this line against Alejens and perhaps if you enjoy it you might also start employing it in your own games. Uh, so without further ado let's check out this very nice game. Uh, Kasparov has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, at this time, of course, Kasparov was uh, still not world champion uh, as the game was played in 1978. Uh, at, the, at that time, of course, Anatoly Karpov was world champion. Uh, but okay, knight to f6, Alejin's defense is on the board. With, we have e5, just challenging the knight. Uh, knight to d5, d4 and d6. And here, um, when I only started learning about chess, I, I, I knew that you can go f4, c4, create a four pawn, uh, pawn storm in the center and just, uh, you know, play it that way. But here was the first time I saw the knight to f3 move and uh, I was uh, very interested. Why not immediately go f4 uh, so your knight doesn't block the pawn? But, uh, you know, if, if Kasparov played it, uh, of course, I was uh, very interested in it. Uh, Black continues with g6. Uh, with bishop to c4, kicking away the knight, knight to b6, challenging the bishop, and now bishop to b3. If you are if you have this position in bullet, you can even try the bishop captures on f7, knight g5, and e6. Uh, even though it's not really all that great for white, uh, you will be able to win a lot of bullet points with this idea. Uh, and here, uh, Palatnik uh, went a5. And this is the this is the same position that um, Boris Spassky had against Bobby Fischer in their 1972 World Chess Championship match, and uh, Spassky went for the immediate bishop to g7. If you haven't seen this game on my channel, if you weren't a subscriber when we were covering the Bobby Fischer saga, I will put a link to that game in the description below. It will be the first thing you will see if you want to check that out as well to see how Fischer handles this position with the black pieces. Uh, but here we have a5 uh, by Semyon Palatnik, uh, we have a4 by Kasparov, not allowing a4 by black, and now bishop to g7. And here knight to g5. Uh, taking advantage of uh, the undefended pawn on f7 uh, and preparing f4. And the knight will then not go back to f3, the knight will go to e4, and from e4 uh, it will be a, a very strong piece. So first e6, uh, taking care of the, the threat uh, uh, on the f7 square, we have f4, uh, and now comes d captures on e5. Uh, we have pawn captures on e5, and now c5, challenging white's strong center. Uh, and here you could go c3, but first Kasparov uh, creates another threat towards the f7 pawn. You have to deal with this, and only after Palatnik castles, uh, Kasparov wins, uh, goes for c3, uh, just strengthening the center. Uh, with knight to c6, developing, adding another attacker towards the d4 pawn. Uh, we have knight to e4 now. And for me, for the knight is a very strong piece, uh, going for d6, but also for f6. Uh, if black, uh, if Kasparov manages to win black's dark square bishop, then there will be a lot of holes here to cover. And as Kasparov still has the bishop pair, it should be should be quite a nice advantage. Uh, so first, knight to d7, further controlling the f6 square. Uh, bishop to e3, developing a bishop, also protecting the d4 square one more time. Uh, and now knight to e7. From there, the knight can go to either uh, d5 or f5. Uh, and bishop to g5 now, uh, pinning the knight on e7. We have c captures on d4, c captures on d4, and now h6 by black. 
uh, black now wants to unpin. So first bishop to h4, we have g5 by Palatnik and bishop all the way to f2 now uh, with uh, more protection towards the d4 pawn. Uh, and now knight finally comes to g6 as the, the, the square opened up. Uh, we have knight b to c3 by Kasparov, uh, developing yet another knight, and now queen to e7. And here, bishop to c2. The bishop will be much more useful on this diagonal, uh, as it is a pretty weak diagonal. This knight is not on f6, this knight is on g6, so it makes this uh, h7 square even weaker. Uh, we have b6 by black, maybe with ideas of fianchettoing the light square bishop. Uh, bishop to e3 by Kasparov, uh, and now comes bishop to a6. Uh, by moving bishop to e3, Kasparov reads some uh, space for the rook, so you can now uh, move it with rook to f2. Uh, and here you have to decide what to do with black. Black uh, definitely prepared f5. Uh, but f5 goes into a, into a line that pretty much forces white to, to end up uh, w with uh, uh, being a pawn up in the endgame. For example, if f5, you can capture on Passan, uh, and then after knight captures, you can go d5. And here, after a series of trades, uh, knight captures, 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 and captures with check, king h8. Uh, now you will grab the b6 pawn. And here, white is just up a pawn. Uh, black can play some bishop to b7, attack the queen, and here, after queen to d6, we can just go uh, into a long series of trades, captures, bishop can capture the rook, uh, bishop can capture on e4, queen captures here, knight captures and bishop captures, and you get this position uh, where your rook is under attack, rook c8, and the game continues. Uh, where white is up a pawn, it's, uh, it's a b2 pawn, so black does have a lot of pressure against it, uh, but uh, white, white should be better. Can Palatnik hold this against Kasparov? Uh, well, uh, we'll never know as uh, the, the position was not reached. So here, uh, instead of this f5 line, Palatnik played knight to h8 first. And it simply doesn't work. So, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the move uh, and uh, why, I, why I enjoy this game so much. Uh, I will give you a, a couple of seconds uh, if you want to decide whether to do it or not. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent finder of tactics on Gary Kasparov's birthday. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, here, as we said, this diagonal is weak. The queen is also uh, looking forward to coming over to h5, maybe also threatened to come to h7. So, bishop to captures on g5. Uh, a very nice idea. And you have to react to it as your queen is under attack. Uh, so, how do you defend? We have h captures on g5 and now queen to h5. Uh, with ideas that, uh, well, if black does nothing, you will get uh, some knight f6 check ideas. Uh, and then, of course, after the knight moves, knight captures, pawn captures, and, well, queen to h7 will be will be deadly. Uh, but here we have f5, creating uh, some room for the king. And also, if uh, white doesn't react, the bishop is now blocked by the f5 pawn. So, of course, Kasparov has to react. Knight captures and g5 is played, again threatening checkmate on h7. So, we have rook to f7, Kasparov already sacrificed a piece, so Palatnik doesn't mind giving up the rook uh, to grab yet another piece. Uh, but, of course, Kasparov isn't interested. Here, uh, Kasparov finds the best way uh, to continue this fierce attack, uh, and he sacrifices the second bishop. That's what's always nice about having the bishop pair, you can always sacrifice both of your bishops. Uh, and it doesn't matter uh, what you capture it with, with the pawn or the rook. Whichever you capture it with will free the d5 square for Kasparov's knight, and this is the point of bishop captures on f5. Uh, either you capture and the f5 square frees immediately, or you first grab it with the rook, which which happened in the game. Uh, we have rook captures on, e, on f5, e captures on f5, and now just knight to d5. And here you can see, even though black is up material, uh, white's knights are, are really impressive, just covering a whole lot of squares in front of the black king. And it's, uh, well, the black just doesn't have any useful moves. Here, Palatnik did play queen to e8. He offered a trade of queens, but of course Kasparov isn't inter interested. He sacrificed material. He wants to take this uh, to an end. He played queen to h7 with check. Uh, we have king to f8, and now comes queen captures on f5. Uh, a very important move. It's not about grabbing a pawn. It's about freeing the f-file for the rook. Uh, so king goes back, and now queen back to h7. King to f8. And now, how do you bring the rook into the game? Not 
rook to f1 because all of you saw that the bishop on a6 is covering the f1 square uh, but rather a nice rook lift rook to a3 now the rook is coming over to f3 and there's no way for black to prevent this uh, here uh, palatnik tried an active move rook to c8 hoping for some checkmating ideas which are possible for black if white messes up uh, Kasparov went rook to f3 check with knight to f6 blocking uh, and this was Polotnik's idea. Uh, if e captures on f6 then of course rook to c1 uh, well ends pretty badly for white as queen to e1 will be checkmate. Uh, the king has nowhere to go. Uh, so after knight to f6 Kasparov simply makes room for his king. We have h3 uh, and now comes queen to g6 but uh, any move any other move isn't much better. Uh, but uh, again, for the second time in this video, feel free to pause it and find the, the quickest way to end Black's suffering. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, uh, once again, for, for you to decide whether you want to do it or not, as it is a Saturday, uh, at least here in Croatia. Uh, so yeah, for those of you who were able to do it, once again, congratulations, finding such nice tactics on a Saturday and also on Kasparov's birthday. Uh, you are an excellent player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Rook captures on f6 with check. So how does black react? Well, you do have to capture the rook, otherwise you're going to lose a queen. Uh, bishop captures on f6 is played, and now, of course, knight e6 check. And you don't have all that many squares. King to e8 was played, and now here, uh, you could still mess up, for example, if you play something like uh, knight d to c7 check. You might think it's the same, but it's not. Here, black can just uh, capture it, and after knight captures, uh, King will attack the knight and you don't have a checkmate here. You will just have to go back and forth and be very happy with a perpetual as you are down material. Uh, but Kasparov of course did no such thing here. Kasparov played knight captures on f6. It's with check. And now the king has nowhere to go. The white knights are simply too powerful and uh, black has to give up the queen. But Palatnik did not give up the queen. It was in this position that Semen Palatnik resigned the game. Uh, he resigned because he loses the queen, and after that there are no more tricks. You can give one check, the king will hide on h2, and now it's just all over. Well, the, the threat of checkmate is here, once you uh, block it, check, moves, captures, and now white is just up too much material, the position is completely winning for white. Uh, so yeah, after knight captures on f6, Samuel Plotnik resigned the game, and uh, a very nice victory for the 15-year-old Gary Kasparov, really a powerful attacking game against uh, the Aliyahin defense. So uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I remember when I saw it, I really enjoyed it, and I've uh, tried to uh, to use ideas uh, I, I, I've seen in this game, uh, in my games against Aliyahin's defense, as I have faced it uh, several times uh, in, in tournament playing classical chess. Uh, but also in Blitz, you can always go for some nice ideas, uh, nice attacking ideas that happened in this game. Uh, so yeah. Uh, once again, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Miki Gromatikov, uh, Daniel Wilson, Daniel Domazet, uh, Heng Tang Wang, and uh, uh, Aristotle's de Oliveira Marquis for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Uh, do check out to the winners. Maybe you've won the giveaway yesterday. And also, uh, if you're interested, check out uh, Spassky versus Fisher game 13 to see how uh, Bobby Fisher handles this line with the black pieces of the Aliyahin's defense. Thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Saturday.